The effects of the overconsumption of folic acid include changes in the immune system, blockage of coronary artery stents, increased risk of colon cancer, increased risk of asthma to a child of a mother taking folic acid supplements, accelerated growth of pre-existing cancers, and an increased risk of cognitive decline in the elderly, particularly those that have low B12 levels. But when all this comes out in the media, what they don't tell you is that folic acid is the cheap, man-made, long shelf life version of vitamin B9. And this is what causes this toxicity. The actual vitamin in food is folate, not folic acid. Now the reporters and the scientists may mention folate, but they talk as if folate and folic acid are the same or that they're interchangeable. They do the same thing when they're talking about progestin, the drug, and progesterone, the natural hormone. Now folates, which are the vitamin, are found in a wide variety of foods. Rich sources include liver, yeast extract, and green leafy vegetables such as spinach, kale, and Brussels sprouts. Significant amounts are also found in other vegetables and fruits, including broccoli, cabbage, parsnips, and oranges. But you won't find one single molecule of folic acid in any of these foods. Now our body can convert the synthetically made folic acid into folates, and that's why there are benefits. I'm sure you've heard that there are fewer birth defects in babies from mothers that take supplements of folic acid. But, and this is a gigantic but, people don't make the conversion as well as they age. So the older we get, the less appropriate folic acid supplementation is. There are also genetic polymorphisms in a significant percentage of the population that cannot make this conversion at all. Now it's clear that since folic acid is unnatural, it's synthetic, it's chemically different than folate, and it's structurally different, and it's not even absorbed in the same pathways as folate, long-term folic acid consumption may be hazardous to human health. Now, Taking supplements with, with as little as 0.8 micrograms a day of folic acid, that's 800 micrograms, has been shown to increase your risk of dying of heart disease and cancer. And this was according to a large randomized treatment trial that was designed to carefully examine this issue. This was the Norwegian vitamin trial. It was in almost 4,000 patients who were followed for three and a half years. Now this study was designed to find the benefits of taking supplements, but the results obviously were contrary to the expectations. Folic acid supplementation was found to lower homocysteine levels, which we think is good, but it increased the relative risk of heart attacks, strokes, and death by 20%, along with more than a 30% increase in cancer. Now those with the highest baseline levels of homocysteine, which is around 13, suffered the most harm from taking supplements of folic acid, the exact opposite of what we would expect. Now in January of 1998, there was the mandatory deadline for the fortification of grain products with folic acid in the United States. Folic acid was added to flours used to bake breads, rolls, and crackers. Another hefty source of this supplement comes from the enriched, that's the vitamin added, ready to eat cereals. Now last year, health officials in Chile reported that hospitalization rates for colon cancer among men and women age 45 and older more than doubled in their country since they started fortification with folic acid. That was introduced in the year 2000. Now in the year 2007, Joel Mason, who is the director of the Vitamins and Carcinogenesis Laboratory at Tufts University Medical School, described a study in the United States and Canada that suggested that rates of colon cancer rose following the years, following years of a steady decline. And this happened to coincide with 
the late 1990s when we started fortifying with folic acid. So since 1998, folic acid intake has increased significantly in every segment of the U.S. population with the average additional intake of about 220 micrograms a day. Now remember, as little as 20 or 200 micrograms causes overloads and imbalances with increased risk of illness. A significant segment of the USA population is now consuming over a milligram a day of folic acid. This is a, the amount that was found in that Norwegian study to increase the risk of heart disease and cancer. So what should you do to avoid the synthetic toxin that we're told is a vitamin? A natural foods diet is always the most important first step. This means reduce your intake of processed bakery products and other products made from fortified grains, and especially, of course, the processed cereals. Nature gets it right, but man, especially when corporate greed is involved, usually gets it wrong. Now, folates in food are, are affected by freshness, and they're also degraded by cooking. So be sure to eat some of that organic grass-fed beef liver or green leafy vegetables if you prefer raw. Now, I recommend ditching any vitamin pill that gives you more folic acid. The major forms of folate found in food are methyl tetrahydrofolate and formal tetrahydrofolate and these can be supplemented in pills. That's if you have a bad diet or if you're found to be deficient. You can check a folate blood level, but to get a more individualized marker, you can do a neutrophilic hypersegmentation index, which is a functional test of folate and B12 status. This is Dr. G. Thanks so much for watching.